Voters say no, numbers bosses say not so fast, cabinet says shut them down. Two late breaking chapters in the numbers story. Also ahead, the church reacts to yesterday's no vote. And another man is gunned down. We've got the family's reaction. The National Report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Lime. A late-breaking twist in the referendum saga. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kendino Knowles. I'm Keisha Adderley. Thanks for joining us. Late breaking news from the cabinet in light of the overwhelming no vote yesterday. Cabinet office issued a press statement just minutes ago. The release said in part that all web shop owners and operators are placed on notice that all their gaming operations, including all online gaming and the numbers games, must cease with immediate effect. The release added that if the shops don't close, the owners, operators and patrons will be, as the release said, exposed to prosecution without further notice or warning. Now, the Prime Minister, through the release, said that even though operators should cease and desist from their gaming operations, they should not close their doors to employees and people who have what the release called lawful commercial relationships, including landlords throughout the country, utility and service companies, suppliers of goods and other third-party creditors. Finally, the release said the government expects that all web shop owners and operators will cooperate in giving effect to what was outlined so as to thereby eliminate the need for the relevant law enforcement authorities to take coercive action to compel the necessary result. Now, all of this as numbers bosses took a preemptive step of their own. Today, they're preparing to take the government to court as they seek to defend the gambling trade Bahamians rejected in a referendum yesterday. Late this afternoon, four web shop operators through their attorney, Wayne Monroe, began preparing to appear before Supreme Court judge seeking an injunction they intend to file tomorrow, challenging the effect of the election result on their web shops. Our firm Carey has this angle of the late breaking story. Prominent attorney Wayne Munro has confirmed that all of the major web shop operators have retained his services to help them wage a major battle in the courts to prevent the government and the police from shutting them down. I'm instructed by Pete DeVoe, who does business as Percy's Web Cafe, better known as the Island Game. I'm instructed by the FML group of companies. I'm instructed by the business that is better known as Island Luck. And I'm instructed by the business that trades as a suit drawer. The legal action comes after what Monroe claims are statements made by the government and the police leading up to the referendum that they would shut down the web shops following a no vote. Monroe now wants the court to prevent that from happening. It's not illegal simply because people say it's illegal. And so the body that's set to determine and pronounce and declare the law is the court. Um, I requested that the Attorney General give an undertaking that my client would not be interfered with pending the litigation of his matter. The Attorney General was not either able or willing to give that undertaking, and she quite frankly and collegially told me that. And for that reason, I've had to move to the court to seek a fixture for an application for an injunction. He also outlined what the injunction application will entail. We wish a declaration of the court that what our clients does, that what our clients do is within the law, a declaration that to do that would infringe their rights, and a perpetual order preventing it happening. Meantime, Monroe has a hearing before Senior Justice John Isaacs on the matter at 9 Wednesday morning. Fern Carey, Sedanus Network News. 
Of the more than 173,000 registered voters, unofficial results show that just under 80,000 people participated in yesterday's referendum on gambling. That represents a 46% voter turnout, and that's below the voter turnout in the 2002 referendum. For question one, WebShop Gaming got 30,776 or 767 people, or 39%, who voted yes, while 48,012 people, or 60.9%, voted no. For question two, on a national lottery, 32,170 people, or 40.6%, voted yes, while 49,961 people, or 59.3%, voted no. Um, recount still ongoing today. Um, all of the uh, returning officers started around about 9.30 or 9 o'clock, and um, most of them are still doing a recount of each polling uh, division in their constituency. So a few have been received, but we're still waiting for that to determine an official count. Now, in 2002, Bahamians voted in the first ever constitutional referendum. Five questions were put to the electorate, which were also all rejected. Mr. Hall anticipated the results of yesterday's poll will be made official sometime Tuesday evening. But overall, he's pleased with how everything went. Everything went smoothly from our end. And even in the various constituencies, everything went well. I'd, I've never heard, I did not hear any major hiccup except someone, some observer who uh, I said earlier, who uh, attempted to um, replace a name on a letter that was issued by the Minister of National Security. Other than that, we have heard no adverse report. Mm -hmm. So things seem to be running smoothly. Religious leaders say it was the answer to their prayers when Bahamians voted against a practice they say would have taken the country in the wrong direction. Now, there were hundreds of Christians in the number when the votes were tallied last night. Our Jaminita Swain was embedded with the group as the results came in. Let the church say amen. The vote no camp clearly excited after claiming a win in the referendum. Grace Community Church was the command center for the vote no camp who kept score up until 9.30 when Acting Parliamentary Commissioner Sherlyn Hall projected that Bahamians had rejected the gambling proposal. President of the Bahamas Christian Council, Reverend Ranford Patterson, says now that the vote is over, he is prepared to meet with the Prime Minister or other senior government officials to chart the way forward. The council is ready to do its part. We believe that we are part of this Bahamas. And so whatever needs to be needs to be need to happen, we feel it's our responsibility to work with all of the agencies in this country to make it happen. Which means that's the government, civic society, whoever. We are part of civic society, but other civic society groups to make um, this country a better place for all of us to live in. We, we ain't got nowhere to go. This is home for all of us. Patterson says he is pleased that the no camps message resonated with voters. Gambling has all types of devices. That was not something that I wanted for my children. I didn't want to leave that as a heritage for my children or my grandchildren. We really look within deep so you could find the real model. So I vote because I know where this would lead, where it would take, at least not even for me, the next generation. I vote no because the Bible opposes gambling. Senior pastor of Bahamas Faith Ministries, Dr. Miles Monroe, says those pastors who supported the Yes Camp simply had a different perspective. We don't consider them any less or more than uh, part of this family. And uh, we believe that as we go forward, we can all work together to make sure we bring healing uh, in the community, first of all. And then, of course, we're supposed to be a ministry of healing to the nation. So those, found, those are pastors who uh, uh, may have had different perspectives. They're very special to us. Pastors in the no vote camp say they move by faith and not by chance. So the next step now is to ensure that the government enforces the laws. Jamita Swain, ZNS Network News. On Sunday past, Dr. Monroe delivered a statement condemning gambling. In the aftermath, the senior pastor of Bahamas Faith Ministry says he's confident that when he travels abroad from here on in, he can truly say God lives in the Bahamas. This is a mandate given to the government 
uh, to proceed with developing new opportunities for people to get legal jobs. I think this is a sign that uh, the government needs to go to work now and that uh, they need to become more creative, uh, more productive, we must become more engaged in making sure that we use our local talent to produce legal jobs. This to me is a strong vote tonight. Now, now that the gaming referendum is behind us, evangelist Reverend Dr. Rex Major outlined the issues he believes need to be addressed in another pending referendum. First of all, the preamble mustn't change, which outlines us as a nation committed to God. Secondly, I urge them to implement a new amendment to the Constitution, realizing what we are facing in the global village, that the only way to preserve the true nature of marriage is it for it to be enshrined in the Constitution. Because if it was just a law, Parliament could pass a law and change the law overnight. Night. But for it to be changed after it's in the Constitution, you need a national referendum of three quarters of the votes. Now we'll first look at whether we have a cold front heading this way. We'll tell you more about that later in the newscast. But outside of our studios, we have near clear skies, temperatures 73 degrees, relative humidity 73 percent. Winds out of the east at 6 knots, your barometric pressure 1,021.4 millibars. That's about 30.16 inches in rising. But stay tuned. Your family island temperatures, travel, and boating forecast is still to come. Well, still to come tonight, a family mourns as they lose a brother and friend to murder. The referendum is over, but the Bahamas Volleyball Federation campaign is revving up. We've got the latest coming up in sports. You're watching the Bahamas tonight in HD.